Strange Pages from Family Papers by T. F. Thistleton Dyer. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Strange Pages from Family Papers by T. F. Thistleton Dyer. Chapter 14 Honoured Hearts. I will ye charge, after that I depart to holy grave, and there bury my heart, let it remain ever both time and hour, to the last day I see my Saviour. Old Ballad quoted in Sir Walter Scott's notes to Marmion. A curious and remarkable custom which prevailed more or less down to the present century was that of heart burial. In connection with this strange practice numerous romantic stories are told, the supreme regard for the heart as the source of the affections, having caused it to be bequeathed by a relative or friend in times past, as the most tender and valuable legacy. In many cases, too, the heart, being more easy to transport, was removed from some distant land to the home of the deceased, and hence it found a resting place, in a locality endeared by past associations. Westminster Abbey, it may be remembered, contains the hearts of many illustrious personages. The heart of Queen Elizabeth was buried there, and it is related how a prying Westminster boy one day, discovering the depositories of the hearts of Elizabeth and her sister Queen Mary, subsequently boasted how he had grasped in his hand those once haughty hearts. Prince Henry of Wales, son of James I, who died at the early age of eighteen, was interred in Westminster Abbey, his heart being enclosed in lead and placed upon his breast. And among further royal personages, whose hearts were buried in a similar manner, may be mentioned Charles II, William and Mary, George, Prince of Denmark, and Queen Anne. The heart of Edward, Lord Bruce, was enclosed in a silver case, and deposited in the Abbey Church of Culross, near the family seat. In the year 1808 this sad relic was discovered by Sir Robert Preston. The lid of the silver case bearing on the exterior the name of the unfortunate duelist, and after drawings had been taken of it, the whole was carefully replaced in the vault, and in St. Nicholas's Chapel, Westminster, was enshrined the heart of Esme Stuart, Duke of Richmond, where a monument to his memory is still to be seen with this fact inscribed upon it. Many interesting instances of heart burial are to be found in our parish churches. In the church of Horndon on the Hill, Essex, which was once the seat of Sir Thomas Boleyn, a nameless black marble monument is pointed out as that of Anne Boleyn. According to a popular tradition, long current in the neighbourhood, this is said to have contained the head or heart. It is within a narrow seat, writes Miss Strickland, and may have contained her head or her heart, for it is too short to contain a body. The oldest people in the neighbourhood all declare that they have heard the tradition in their youth from a previous generation of aged persons, who all affirm it to be Anne Boleyn's monument. But it would seem there has always been a mysterious uncertainty about Anne Boleyn's burial place, and a correspondent of the Gentleman's Magazine, in October 1815, speaks of the headless remains of the departed queen, as deposited in the arrow chests and buried in the tower chapel before the high altar, where that stood the most sagacious antiquary, after a lapse of more than three hundred years, cannot now determine, nor is the circumstance, though related by eminent writers, clearly ascertained. In a cellar, the body of a person of short stature without a head, not many years since, was found, and supposed to be the reliquies of poor Anne, but soon after it was reinterred in the same place and covered with earth. By her testament, Eleanor, Duchess of Buckingham, wife of Edward, Duke of Buckingham, who was beheaded on May the 17th, 1521, appointed her heart to be buried in the church of the Grey Friars within the city of London, and in the Sackville vault in Witham Church, Sussex, is a curiously shaped leaden box in the form of a heart, on a brass plate attached to which is this inscription, The Heart of Isabella, Countess of Northampton, died on October the 14th, 1661. A leaden drum deposited in a vault in the church of Brington 
is generally supposed to contain the head of Henry Spencer, Earl of Sunderland, who received his death wound at the Battle of Newbury. And at Wells Cathedral, in a box of copper, a heart was accidentally discovered, supposed to be that of one of the bishops. And in the family vault of the Hungerfords, at Farley Castle, a heart was one day found in a glazed earthenware pot, covered with white leather. The widow of John Balliol, father of Bruce's rival, showed her affection for her dead lord in a strange way, for she embalmed his heart, placed it in an ivory casket, and during her twenty years of widowhood she never sat down to meals without this silent reminder of happier days. On her death she left instructions for her husband's heart to be laid on her bosom, and from that day New Abbey was known as Sweetheart Abbey, and never, it is said, did Abbey Walls shelter a sweeter, truer heart than that of the Lady of Barnard Castle. Among the many instances of heart bequests may be noticed that of Edward I, who on his deathbed expressed a wish to his son that his heart might be sent to Palestine, inasmuch as after his accession he had promised to return to Jerusalem and aid the crusade which was then in a depressed condition. But, unfortunately, owing to his wars with Scotland, he failed to fulfil his engagement, and at his death he provided two thousand pounds of silver for an expedition to convey his heart thither, trusting that God would accept this fulfilment of his vow and grant his blessing on the undertaking, at the same time imprecating eternal damnation on any who should expend the money for any other purpose. But his injunction was not performed. Robert Bruce, King of Scotland, the avowed foe of Edward I, also gave directions to his trusted friend, Sir James Douglas, that his heart should be buried in the Holy Land, because he had left unfulfilled a vow to assist in the crusade, but his wish was frustrated owing to the following tragic occurrence. After the king's death, his heart was taken from his body, and, enclosed in a silver case, was worn by Sir James Douglas, suspended to his neck, who set out for the Holy Land. On reaching Spain, he found the King of Castile engaged in war with the Moors, and thinking any contest with Saracens consistent with his vows, he joined the Spaniards against the Moors. But being overpowered by the enemy's horsemen, in desperation he took the heart from his neck, and threw it before him, shouting aloud, Pass on as thou wert wont, I will follow or die. He was almost immediately struck down and under his body was found the heart of Bruce, which was entrusted to the charge of Sir Simon Lockhart of Lee, who conveyed it back to Scotland, and interred it beneath the high altar in Melrose Abbey, in connection with which Mrs. Hemans wrote some spirited lines. Heart, thou didst press forward still when the trumpet's note rang shrill, where the knightly swords were crossing, and the plumes like sea-foam tossing, leader of the charging spear, fiery heart, and liest thou here? May this narrow spot inurn aught that so could heat and burn. The heart of Richard the Lion-Hearted has had a somewhat eventful history. It seems that this monarch bequeathed his heart to Rouen as a lasting recognition of the constancy of his Norman subjects. The honour was gratefully acknowledged, and in course of time a beautiful shrine was erected to his memory in the cathedral but this costly structure did not escape being destroyed in the year 1738 with other Plantagenet memorials. A hundred years afterwards, the mutilated effigy of Richard was discovered under the cathedral pavement, and near it the leaden casket that had enclosed his heart, which was replaced. Before long it was taken up again and removed to the Museum of Antiquaries, where it remained until the year 1869, when it found a more fitting resting place in the choir of the cathedral. James II bequeathed his heart to be buried in the church of the convent dames de St. Marie at Chaliot, whence it was afterwards removed to the chapel of the English Benedictines in the Faubourg Saint-Jacques, and the heart of Mary Beatrix, his wife, was also bequeathed to the monastery of Chaliot in perpetuity, to be placed in the tribune besides those of her late husband, King James, and the princess, their daughter. Dr. Richard Rawlinson, the well-known antiquary, bequeathed his heart to St. John's College, Oxford, and Edward, Lord Windsor of Bradenham, Bucks, who died at Spa in the year 1754, directed that his body should be buried in the cathedral church of the noble city of Liege, with a convenient tomb to his memory,
but his heart to be enclosed in lead, and sent to England, there to be buried in the chapel of Bradenham, under his father's tomb, in token of a true Englishman. Paul Whitehead, who died in the year 1774, left his heart to his friend Lord Dispenser, to be deposited in his mausoleum at West Wickham. Lord Dispenser accepted the bequest, and on the 16th of May, 1775, the heart, after being wrapped in lead, and placed in a marble urn, was carried with much ceremony to its resting place. Preceding the bier bearing the urn, a grenadier marched in full uniform, nine grenadiers too deep, the odd one last, two German flute-players, two surpliced choristers with notes pinned to their backs, two more flute-players, eleven singing-men in surplices, two French horn-players, two bassoon-players, six fifers and four drummers with muffled drums. Lord Dispenser, as chief mourner, followed the bier in his uniform as colonel of the Bucks Militia, and was succeeded by nine officers of the same corps, two fifers, two drummers, and twenty soldiers, with their firelocks reversed. The dead march in Saul was played, the church bell tolled, and cannons were discharged every three and a half minutes. On arriving at the mausoleum, another hour was spent by the procession in going round and round it, singing funeral dirges, after which the urn containing the heart was carried inside, and placed upon a pedestal bearing the name of Paul Whitehead, and these lines, Unhallowed hands this urn forbear, No gems, no orient spoil, lie here concealed, But what's more rare, a heart that knew no guile. But in the year 1829, some unhallowed hand stole the urn, and the whereabouts of Whitehead's heart remains a mystery to the present day. In recent times, an interesting case of heart burial was that of Lord Byron, whose heart was enclosed in a silver urn and placed at Newstead Abbey in the family vault, and another was that of the poet Shelley, whose body, according to Italian custom after drowning, was burnt to ashes, but the heart would not consume, and so was deposited in the English burying ground at Rome. It is worthy, too, of note, that heart burial prevailed to a very large extent on the continent. To mention a few cases, the heart of Philip, King of Navarre, was buried in the Jacobin's church, Paris and that of Philip, King of France, at the convent of the Carthusians at Bourgfontaines in Valois. The heart of Henry the Second, King of France, was enshrined in an urn of gilt bronze in the Celestines, Paris. That of Henry the Third, according to Camden, was enclosed in a small tomb, and Henry the Fourth's heart was buried in the college of the Jesuits at La Fleche. Heart burial again was practised at the deaths of Louis the Ninth, Twelfth, Thirteenth, and Fourteenth and in the last instance was the occasion of an imposing ceremony. The heart of this great monarch, writes Miss Hartshorn, was carried to the covenant of the Jesuits. A procession was arranged by the Cardinal de Rohan, and surrounded by flaming torches, and escorted by a company of the royal guards. The heart arrived at the convent, where it was received by the rector, who pronounced over it an eloquent and striking discourse. The heart of Mary de Medicis, who built the magnificent palace of the Luxembourg, was interred at the church of the Jesuits in Paris, and that of Maria Theresa, wife of Louis the Fourteenth, was deposited in a silver case in the monastery of Val de Grasse. The body of Gustavus Adolphus, the illustrious monarch who fell in the field of Lutzen, was embalmed, and his heart received sepulchre at Stockholm. And it is well known the heart of Cardinal Mazarin was, by his own desire, sent to the church of the Thetans and Anne of Austria, the mother of Louis the Fourteenth, directed in her will that her body should be buried at St. Denis, near to her husband, of glorious memory, but her heart she bequeathed to Val de Grasse, and she also decreed that it should be drawn out through her side, without making any further opening than was absolutely necessary. Instances such as these show the prevalence of the custom of heart burial in bygone times a further proof of which may be gathered from the innumerable effigies or, or brasses in which a heart holds a prominent place. End of chapter 14